Welcome to Zashi. If this is your first time on my channel, please do well to subscribe and like the bell icon. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the AWS Global Infrastructure. We're going to understand components like regions, availability zones, edge locations, local zones, and many more. But what then is the Global Infrastructure? The AWS Global Infrastructure simply seeks to explain how AWS has its data centers around the world. So the first thing I want us to talk about is a region. A region in AWS is just a physical location or a geographical location of AWS's infrastructure or data centers. So in every region, you are actually going to find data centers. That's pretty much what a region is. AWS is actually the cloud provider that has the highest number of regions. AWS has over about 30 regions spanning across different countries and across different continents. In every region, you're going to find data centers. These data centers are actually grouped into the logical segments known as availability zones. But what is an availability zone? An availability zone is nothing but something which is logical. It's just a logical grouping of two or more data centers that are discrete in power and redundant in networking. So what AWS has actually done is that in every region, you're going to find two or more availability zones. These availability zones are pretty much just a logical concept. And the reason why AWS brought in the concept of availability zones is just to ensure that there is a high availability, redundancy, fault tolerance in its regions. But in every availability zone, you're going to find two or more data centers. Okay? That's pretty much what an availability zone is talking about. Each availability zone is at least 15 miles from the other availability zone. That's pretty much one thing you should understand. Remember, an availability zone is just a logical concept. The most important thing you should understand is that in a region, you pretty much have data centers, and these data centers are actually logically grouped to each other to form an availability zone. In every region, you're going to have two or more availability zones. And each availability zone in a region is going to have two or more data centers. Remember AWS regions you are actually found in different parts of the world. It's always advisable that customers make use of regions that are actually closest to their customers. Now, let's say for example, you actually are making use of the US East 1 region. The US East 1 region is actually the default region on AWS and it's assumed to be the largest AWS region since it has over about six availability zones. Now, let's say for example, you are a customer making use of the US East 1 region. And let's say you hosted an AWS um, resource on a service called EC2. Now, let's say you actually have an application hosted on a server on EC2, and that application is being used by people in different parts of the world. Let's say you actually have people in India, you have people in Australia, you have people in Africa, and you have people in Europe. Let's say you also have people around America making use of the application. Definitely because um, the region is actually in America, that's around the Maryland, Virginia area. People who actually find themselves around this area are gonna easily access that application. But now ask yourself, what happens to those who are in different parts of the world trying to access that application? That is pretty much where the concept of edge locations actually comes in. When we talk about an edge location, we are simply talking about small infrastructures that are spread around the world and these infrastructures are pretty much used for caching data. This data could actually be um, static data or dynamic data. So what you could actually do with your application is you can actually have your application content cached on different edge locations. So your application content could actually be cached on different edge locations. And pretty much what actually happens is that when users from India or from Australia are actually trying to access the application, their traffic or their requests 
actually gets routed to the edge location that is closest to them. And when that actually happens, these users are going to experience low latency while trying to access the application. Edge locations are very important because they help customers have their data cached on edge locations and anytime data is cached in an edge location, it, it is going to have a time to leave. And due to that, customers who are trying to access the data of the application are going to experience low latency while trying to access such applications. Just so you know, edge locations are not found in regions. They are pretty much small infrastructures which are found around regions and they are spread around the world for catching data for customers. One other thing I would like you guys to understand is the concept of local zones. We all know that the aspect of AWS is focused around building services. And these services could be compute services, these services could actually be storage services, these services could be database services, and all of that. There are some parts of the world where we do not have AWS regions um, located in those areas. So pretty much with the concept of local zones, what AWS has done is that AWS actually has its services brought close to a local population so that customers who are trying to make use of those services could actually experience low latency while trying to access those services. Remember the concept of edge locations is focused around catching customer data so that users who are trying to access the data can experience low latency. When we talk about local zones, local zones pretty much brings AWS services close to customers. These are customers that are actually found in large cities where we do not have AWS regions or data centers around those areas. Let's say for example, we actually have New York as a city. And let's say that we do not have um, data centers or regions around the city of New York. Now, what AWS has done is that AWS has developed local zones in such a way that you can actually have compute services or lab-based services actually made available and made very close to the population of New York so that anytime customers in New York are trying to access these services to host their applications or store their data, that is going to actually happen very fast with low latency. That is pretty much what the concept of local zones actually is.